Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, Asia with me in review. This is Johnson Choi, the host. The guest today, we have uh, Corey Tong, president and producer of Makai Motion Pictures. Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Johnson. Thanks I me. met uh, Corey probably more than 10 years ago at the Hawaii International Film Festival. Um, looking back, uh, back to the time when the, the Act 221 tax credit and a lot of things happening. And I've been working with Corey for more than a decade. And uh, Corey is bringing some uh, very interesting uh, projects uh, from California uh, to Hawaii and to the mainland USA. Uh, Corey was born in Hawaii, uh, one of the success successful local boys that make it uh, big in California. And uh, since I travel to California all the time, I do see Corey uh, quite a few times a year. Okay, Corey, uh, let's talk about your next uh, big project coming up. Well, thanks, Johnson. We have a, um, so I've been based in San Francisco and uh, sometimes in Hawaii, but I work a lot, as you know, with Asia, Pacific region. I'm very, very interested in, in sharing and producing content and uh, stories between North America, Hawaii, Pacific region, and Asia, and I'm taking things back and forth. So I've been involved uh, for the last three years with a new documentary that has just come out recently, and uh, we will be launching it next year on public television. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about that, uh, more about that in a bit, but it's a new documentary directed by James Q. Chan, and he and I have been producing this film for the last three or four years. And it's called Forever Chinatown. It's a documentary about an amazing artist based in San Francisco named Frank Wong, who um, was born and raised in his youth in San Francisco Chinatown, moved to Los Angeles, traveled the world. But he has uh, an amazing body of work. He creates miniature models, miniature architectural models, dioramas, that are of one inch scale. So they're miniatures, but they're incredible. They capture his memories of growing up in San Francisco Chinatown, as well as some of his own romantic thoughts about uh, remember memory and what he um, what he thinks of when he when he remembers his family growing up in the neighborhood of San Francisco Chinatown, the the sights, the smells, the people, his grandmother his aunts. So this artwork is in the Chinese Historical Society Museum in San Francisco. And James uh, discovered this and, and uh, showed it to me. And we thought it would make an incredible film. So um, throughout the last three years, we've been putting the piece together. And now the film has just been finished. We just launched it, had its world premiere at uh, Full Frame Film Festival, which is a wonderful documentary festival in, in the States. In, um, in the East Coast and we, uh, of the US, and we have taken it to New Zealand. We hope that we'll be able to bring it to um, Hawaii for the Hawaii Film Festival. We're still- That will be um, very exciting. Yeah, so we hope to bring it to Hawaii in the next couple of months. And um, we're waiting for, um, to hear about that. But we um, also will be taking the film throughout the world and then um, to different parts of Asia, US, um, Europe, hopefully, and other parts of the world where there are Asian communities who have built their own physical neighborhoods or cultural neighborhoods. For example, Hawaii has an amazing Chinatown, has incredible history. We'd love to bring it here so that people who either grew up and, and know the Chinatown, or not just Chinatowns, but any neighborhood that somebody might have grown up with, um, whether they're immigrants or, uh, uh, you know, long ago, um, you know, generations who've lived here or recent immigrants, I think everybody feels this nostalgia or, or very, very um, strong ties to the, the many of the neighborhoods that they grew Actually, up. you know, there are so many uh, Chinese immigrants, you know, uh, came to Hawaii and also uh, even more, you know, immigrants that went to San Francisco who built yep. a the real world, yes. and now the, the, the wave of new immigrants you know, coming from China is very mm -hmm. different from those that came 100 years ago. But in any way, there's a lot of uh, connection. And there is actually a lot of interest uh, expressed you know, uh, in Asia that they want to uh, 
take a look, you know, on the historic perspective, uh, how those uh, early immigrants uh, did in the early year, and and this film will be a very good way to uh, recapture and to help the younger generation that live in a different part of the world to see how the earlier immigrant to America uh, spent their life. Yeah. And, and it's very interesting. Actually, we, quite a few years back, we went back to Hong Kong and, uh, you know, look at some projects. Mm -hmm. um, there may be some of the things that uh, Asia uh, uh, countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, or China uh, may be interested to look at it too, right? Yeah, and we hope to take this film out into the world where we can uh, take some of the artwork itself and the film. We would like to go to places where there are strong Chinese communities, not just in China, but in Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, other places, Thailand, Philippines, where the Chinese diaspora has gone all right. over and has settled even in London, in South America. Very, very fascinating way that, that uh, not just Chinese, but Asian immigrants and Asian diaspora has gone throughout uh, the world and developed their own sense of their community. Right. They found each other. They've had an amazing, you know, sometimes they might be the only family in, in one city. But uh, that might end up, you know, growing. They might bring their friends and family there. That's why there's so many Asian hubs, right. uh, communities all over, especially in the nor North America. And so we hope that this film captures some of that, of the way that that maybe our parents or grandparents or great grandparents came into this particular country, but also to uh, many other countries. Yeah, the happening of uh, Chinatown throughout uh, North America, not just uh, San Francisco, Hawaii, including New York, Boston, yeah. uh, Toronto, Vancouver. I mean, uh, there are changes happening uh, there, and uh, to somebody's liking and also to others' uh, dislike, because mm -hmm. they said the fabric of the old Chinatown uh, has changed. And, uh, and I've been spending my last uh, nine years in San Francisco monthly, because my wife worked mm -hmm. there, and, uh, you know, and I can see uh, their arguments. And um, we are afraid that as time goes by, you know, some of those old historic aspects of uh, Chinatown like San Francisco might be gone. I mean, this kind of film will be a good way to, to document uh, the old Chinatown, the old memories of Chinatown, and then uh, hopefully uh, the newcomer that live in Chinatown will appreciate a little bit more yeah, what's happened historically in, in Chinatown. Yeah, we hope so. And, and of course, you know, change is inevitable in, in, in many urban cities yeah. around the world. Yeah. Lots of gentrification right. going on, lots of globalization. And it doesn't always have to be a bad thing, but it can hopefully be integrated right. well so that people still maintain really the sense of cultural community because that's so, I, I think, um, I believe it's very important in in uh, living a very good quality life is to have people, friends, community, food, cultural elements that, that we can always connect with and then of course share with others because I think in a place like San Francisco, that's the beauty, or Hawaii. The amazing things about these cities are that it brings a lot of different cultures together and they can share their own but learn about everyone else's and hopefully this film will share a lot about what as I mentioned, San Francisco Chinatown is about, but really I think a lot of people will reflect on it and really think about their own neighborhoods and their own families. We showed this to uh, a, a piece, of, a clip of the film to some different audiences and there was a wonderful Latino woman in San Francisco who said it felt, she felt so moved by it because it reminded her so much of her own grandmother's life and kitchen. See, the, the film is about seven miniatures that are created by this artist, Frank, and each one is very different and unique, but it's from his own personal memory. So one of them is his grandmother's kitchen. The other one is living room during Christmas time. Another one is uh, on the street. It's a shoe shine stand that he remembers. And another one is uh, the the neighborhood herb shop, the medicinal herb shop, that in many ways, uh, there are a few of them that still exist. I'm not sure if there are any here in Oahu, 
but um, in Honolulu still, but San Francisco, there are a couple of remaining ones, but they don't quite look like I the see. way that they used to in the 40s and 50s, which is what Frank's artwork captures. Yeah. Not just in Hon uh, San Francisco Chinatown, actually in many parts of the world, even yes. I still remember the old Hong Kong when, where I was uh, you know, brought up and, and I look at some of the historic uh, photos uh, of course, there's no miniature uh, sculpture, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, and yesterday I was looking at the old Kai Tech airport in Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. We yep. still remember, I remember those things like yep. Coming right into landing the between buildings. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of scary, but, but those uh, pilots were so skillful to, to land the plane. So some of those, you know, along the same concept, maybe you can help develop you know, other documentary. Uh, we would love to. The world, We'd know. love to. Well, one of the... the Besides, we, we, now that the film is finished, we, besides its broadcast, te television broadcast that's coming up in uh, next year, we are doing two other projects. One is a neighborhood preservation project. So specifically about San Francisco, Chinatown, but on a larger scale, we hope it inspires other people in other cities to do similar things where they record the stories, the families who lived in these places, right and their own memories of, of uh, whether they're recent memories or memories from many generations ago. But the same thing could happen in Hong Kong, could happen in all, all over the place, yeah, in China, in yeah. Japan, in Singapore, Korea. I mean, you know, all of the different, and not just, of course, Asia. I mean, everywhere in the world has, uh, uh, you know, San Francisco, but again, Honolulu and New York City, Toronto, all of these cities have are made up of many very fascinating neighborhoods italian neighborhoods jewish neighborhoods you know the black neighborhoods and it's amazing um really really um strong strong cultural ties compared to san francisco actually there's a lot of city in asia because the rapid economic growth the transformation mm -hmm. was so uh, dramatic yeah that uh that is really even need more of the this kind of documentary too because you know, San Francisco may transform in 70 years. In China, it could transform in 15 years. You know, like in Hong Kong, it transformed also very rapidly. Yeah, every year. Uh, it's every changing. year. Yeah. I mean, every year you go back to Shanghai or Beijing mm -hmm. or Chengdu. Like right now, they have a G20 uh, in Chengdu uh, in the in, in end of the month. And in fact, they transform the whole Chengdu into a, a metropolis city, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so things are happening and changing uh, rapidly, rapidly in, in Asia. Uh, I know that you're also bringing the, uh, the screening to other parts of the, of the country, other parts of the world. Can you share with us? Yeah, we'll be, um, in fact, next month in September, we are taking the film to Hanoi in Vietnam, oh, okay. um, to the Hanoi Cinematheque. So we were invited to bring the film, and we are, uh, James and I are going, James the director and I, are, are going there to present this I film. See. And that'll be a really amazing experience. We're... Um, We'll be showing the film. Very curious to to show it to the Vietnamese uh, communities in Hanoi. Okay, and also to uh, would love to engage and talk with audiences. And then we want to continue to take this out into different parts of the okay. world, as I mentioned: Hong Kong, Singapore, China. Have you done it in San Francisco already? We had a work in progress screening, but uh, okay. also in November we'll be screening the film. Um, with one of the film um, organizations in San Francisco, and we'll announce that in in about a month. We can um, we'll we'll let you okay. we'll let everyone know where okay. and when. Corey, we are going to break in the in a minute or two, okay. uh, and uh, uh, when we come back, uh, maybe we can uh, share with the audience uh, a, a trailer. That would be great. About, We'd love to show a little about bit of a minute the film. or minute and fifteen seconds to to show the highlight of the of the documentary. And hopefully uh, that uh, we can also see it at the Hawaii International Film Festival in November, you know. Uh, so yep. anyway, uh, we're going to take a break right now. Uh, see you in a minute. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. Hi, my name is Kim Lau and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me every other Monday 
at 4 p.m. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome back to ThinkTech Hawaii Asia Review. This is Johnson Choi, the host, and my guest today is Corey Tom. Uh, at this point, we would like to uh, share with you a, a short trailer uh, about the, the documentary that Corey was talking about. trouble remembering things. I'm getting very forgetful at times, you know. So that's what my problem is. I want to capture my memories. And the only way for me to capture my memories is to make them in three dimension. All my miniatures are composites. It's half wishing and half memory. Memories get fuzzy and get more beautiful as years go by. That was the New Day uh, trailer uh, by, uh, about the documentary um, through the help of Makai um, Motion Pictures in Hawaii. Uh, Corey, maybe you can tell me uh, very shortly how you get to meet the, the gentleman uh, and inspire you, and then after that, maybe you can talk about uh, what, is, what are your future plans. Sure. So uh, the director, James Chan, who's a good friend and a director and producer in San Francisco, called me once and said, oh my god, you have to come and look at these incredible pieces of artwork that I found at the Chinese Historical Museum through another friend of ours. And he said they're in, they capture incredibly these the, the, the memories of a neighborhood. And uh, he described it, and so I went to look at them, and I thought they were amazing pieces of artwork. And then we, uh, James had already met Frank, the artist, previously, but then I met him, and we've had many, many lunches, and many spent a lot of time listening to him and the way that he thinks and the way that he remembers his own life. And they're very romantic memories. They're very, very emotional and sentimental memories. And they are captured in these very unusually obsessive and almost, well, they're realistic memories. So as you just saw in the trailer, if you're going through and looking at these pieces, sometimes if someone doesn't know the scale and you're just looking at, let's say, the photos right. or the, the film, you may not actually know that they're one-inch scale models, right, like right. large shoe boxes. Right. You might think, oh, this is a living room or this is a theater set um, where people might be walking through right away. So that whole idea of, of capturing something so perfectly and s with such incredible detail. And one can spend hours looking at these pieces because there's everything from the food on the shelves is from the period. There are mooncakes being made in the oven. There are eggs, there are uh, pressed ducks, there are all sorts of pieces. There's spam. There's all sorts of things that, that really were such an integral part of, of his own life, but the community's life in a very, very intimate way. So after looking at these incredible things, we decided to develop a project, and we pitched it to a number of different um, partners. 
and uh, both partners, funders, broadcasters, and we were very fortunate to have found partners in with ITVS and CAM, Center for Asian American Media, as well as a number of, of uh, private investors and right. foundations right. who all really thought this was a great idea. And so we all uh, spent a lot of time developing the project and, and went into production about a year and a half ago and then spent the entire, uh, almost two years uh, shooting and then editing, working with different musicians, you know, trying to capture the real feel. We came to Hawaii and shot some of it. I see. We, what you didn't see in the trailer are our Oahu um, shots that will, that are in the finished well, film. Well, we might have a chance to see in the hip. Yep, in hopefully, the hopefully we yeah. will. Um, I know in Hawaii we do a lot of film projects. It's usually those uh, big Hollywood uh, uh, film projects, and very seldom do I hear uh, people uh, rare that people are doing you know small project. You know, uh, and going forward, uh, you know, you are in the uh, creativity or creative uh, industry. You know, a movie and other things for for, for a long time since almost up to college time. Uh, can you share with me uh, what? Uh, your future plans that you want to do uh, both in Hawaii, uh, mainland USA, or, or, or Asia, and, and how you would like to collaborate with people that uh, could bring your dream, you know, uh, bigger dreams? Absolutely. Well, as you know, I'm, I was born and raised here. Always have had amazing love and, and sense of, of home here in the island. Of course, I love being on the West Coast as well, and I travel and work a lot. And everywhere I go, I have incredible inspiration to develop projects, to think about stories. I am very, very interested in continuing to make films like this, Forever Chinatown, as well. So these are documentaries, some of them uh, shorter formats, some of them feature-length documentaries, television. We, um, I'm also interested in uh, feature films, and I have developed one feature film and help to produce a film with um, a wonderful Hawaii-based team, Jeanette paulson Heronico and Vili right. Heronico, who we uh, did a film called The Land Has Eyes about 10 years ago. And that was- That's where we met. I yes, that is where we met, <laughs> yes. at the Hawaii Film Festival. Yeah. And we, um, so there are films like that that really, really share stories, very important stories of specific cultures, and hopefully they get to uh, be seen and heard all over the world, and in that regard to share a lot of the cultural, the important cultural aspects of, of what exists maybe here. Um, but I'm, I'm also really interested in developing larger scale feature projects and documentaries. And I would love to really, I find it very important to, to work in co-productions, which means having, let's say, Hawaii partners, U.S. partners, or North American partners with Asian partners, European partners, South American partners. Right now, I'm developing a project. One of them is a series with a New Zealand group. I see. And hopefully, it'll be uh, developed in the next year or so, and it has to do with Maori culture and how Pacific Islanders and their food have moved throughout the entire Pacific region. So that's one of the projects that I'm, I'm developing. Another is a big feature film um, that will take place in Hong Kong, Japan, San Francisco, and Hawaii. Right. And that one is in development stage as well. We've been working on it, but I've had to put it a little bit on the side to complete this one and right. another project that came out last year. And so, um, We'll be bringing that back uh -huh. forward on the uh, maybe the front side burner, and we'll be packaging that. But I also have a real big interest in developing projects as well in Asia that could potentially come into North American markets, and vice versa. I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. There's a lot of opportunity, business opportunity, to share resources and talent. And I think that while many people are doing it, there still is a lot more work to be done, and it can really continue to develop and be refined. So very interested in working with big partners, small partners, independent, as well as larger entities. Uh, today I read the South China Morning Post in Hong Kong uh, that uh, this year uh, China is expecting to uh, overtook United States in the retail sales uh, grand total. Of box office? No, or I'm talking about the retail. Oh, oh I see, not retail. just retail. Like right now, it's about 4.8 trillion US. So mm -hmm. this year, China will overtake it. 
and they also expect a box office side. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, China Money is buying some of the major studio right now in Hollywood. In fact, they are one of the largest uh, screen. They bought a lot of uh, theaters, uh, both in North America and also in uh, Europe. So it's very logical to where the monies are. It's probably it's, it's more towards Asia right now. So I think development firms that are cater to both the North America and also the Asian market maybe a logical approach. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think w I feel like it's important to also share resources. And so that's right. why the idea of joint ventures right. or co-productions in film right. industry are very, very useful because then different people have a stake in the right. outcome and right. the product. Right. And then there are hopefully more opportunities for distributing the stories and the content all over. And that can happen now with, of course, web opportunities, right. web series, television programs, uh, film programs, you know, of all different scales. Even like so Black Frags are, are, are all making their own firm, right? HBO is making their own firm, right? Absolutely. So now Yes, yeah. and and you know not everyone might be great, That's and not right. some yeah. might end up on YouTube, some might end up right. on Vimeo and other smaller. But there are more opportunities. Of course, with that comes that there's a lot more content, and so you have to yeah. wade through sometimes some stories and films that are not great quality or might not be interested, interesting. But at the same time, then one can find incredible, incredible stories or films. It might be short films. Could be okay, we're going to wrap up in about one yeah, minute. Okay, sure. uh, for last minute, what do you want to uh, tell our audience that uh, your 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 dreams uh, next twelve months? Well, love to for all of you to see this film. We'd really love for audiences to be able to see Forever Chinatown, but also to really think about their own stories and what's important to them, both culturally, personally, and to really uh, reflect and to look at the, the films and the TV programs out there, um, find things that are amazing and that they're passionate about, and to support them and Thank then you. to show them. Thank you, Corey. Thank you Mark, very much. If anyone have any uh, interesting project, you know where to find Corey or us, the, the Hong Kong China or Chamber of Commerce. So, Corey. Thank you very much. Welcome Johnson. to the show. Thanks. I will hopefully see you at the Hawaii International Film Festival in November. Hopefully. Hopefully. And, and all yeah. over the world. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.